I reeled my arm back and I launched a punch, but he easily sidestepped it. Oh, come on, Falcon 69, at least land the goddamn punch. Something connected with the side of my face and I was sent sprawling to the floor. I looked up, Brennan stood over me, hate written across his features, the sandwich still in his hand. This dude managed to punch me out, even though I took the first swing, while he was holding a sandwich. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the England Exchange. I'm your host, the Birdman Otis Falcon, and things have really taken a really big drastic turn for us. We were on top of the world for a bit there. We finally hooked up with Peggy. We're dating her. We even got down and dirty with the bird, if you know what I'm saying. And then afterwards, after the beach adventure, we turn into public enemy number one by apparently being framed for thievery. I don't think Falcon 69 did it, man, unless he has like multiple personalities. So I think we're being framed by either Brandon, maybe even Mark. Maybe some character we haven't even seen yet? Who, who knows? Maybe James. Maybe James is the asshole. Maybe he's already tired of making fun of his, um, his shirt all the time. Who knows? Anyway, how could my life change so suddenly? The world seemed to be closing in around me. I felt like I was suffocating. There was too much pressure, too much negativity, too much darkness. There was nothing I could do. Nothing. And then we get a phone call. Is this a phone call we need to survive to turn everything around for us? I mean, not survive, we're not dying. I squinted into the darkness, a halo of light surrounded my phone. It was going off. No, why now? I'm so tired. I didn't bother to answer and finally the ringing stopped. I turned over and shut my eyes. Not gonna stop, are ya? The phone rang and rang and rang. It wouldn't stop. At some point I realized that people in the rooms next to me would get mad if I didn't make it stop. Even more mad than they already were. I sighed and grabbed the phone. Hello, who is this? Falcon 69, it's Nene and Jin Su. Hey, stud. Well, what do you want? Damn, don't you sound happy to hear from us. And after we went through all this trouble to set up the call, we're in different time zones, you know? Trouble? It's... I just at the numbers on my phone. It's 4 a.m. here. How is that going through any trouble? Ungrateful. Anyway, how are things going over there? Um... I hesitated, not really knowing what to say. They probably didn't want to hear about my actual problems. Well, I really am not that type of person that like to burn other people on my issues as well, so I would just say, I would just lie and be like, oh, everything's fine, yeah. Good, I've been good. My voice sounded false even to myself. There was silence on the other end, and I could see, I could just see Nene crossing her arms and narrowing her eyes. Okay, what's the real story? I explained to them the events of the past few hours, the humiliation, the sudden romantic problems at the end of the trip, and how I'd been framed for it all. I finished, my voice wobbling near the end, and hung my head. Well, that's stupid. Huh? What are you talking about? It's not stupid, it's horrible. How am I supposed to, be, how am I supposed to deal with this? How do I get through this? By pushing through, obviously. Oh, aren't you a pillar of fucking support, Nene? The cliche comments that people tell me, Oh, it's fine. It'll be alright. You know what? I know that people say that just so you can feel better, but technically speaking, that never does anything for you. It's supposed to help you out, like, you know, give you light or something. I don't, you know, when people say to me, Oh, it's fine. It'll work out. I'm thinking to myself, Oh, that's easy for you to say. How is it going to work out, huh? You mean... You, what you really mean to say is... I'm sure you'll figure it out eventually after a lot of hard thinking and maybe a lot of sacrifice on your part. That is what it'll be fine really, really means when you think about it. And that's what people should say. Don't humor me with like, oh, it'll be fine, Falcon. No, no, it's not going to be fine. How do you know, huh? You got a crystal ball somewhere I don't know about? If so, let me know how to get out of this mess. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's my, that's my director's co uh, commentary when it comes to this. Um, what? Do you think life was meant to go 100% smoothly? Do you think your friends owe you their instant understanding and forgiveness? God damn, Nene's just laying into me now. Sorry, Nene. God damn, don't I feel like a jerk now? Humans are stupid, stupid creatures. We don't like having the wool pulled over our eyes, and we especially don't like it when someone destroys our trust. So of course everybody's mad at you. You'd be mad at them too. But that's besides the point. How am I expected to do anything now? They said they would let you stay in their hostel if you paid, right? Yeah, but how? My visa only allows me to take part-time student jobs in England. Even if I can find something willing to hire me, or somebody willing to hire me, there's no guarantee I can cover my rent. So call your parents and get help. But would you rather have to ask them to get you a new plane ticket home because you've got nowhere to live? That'll cost money too, and you'd have to abandon your exams. There were only a few weeks left in the semester. He was right. It would be ridiculous to give up now. I had to go, I had to tough it out, at least that long. Everyone hates me. 
Talk to your friends, prove yourself worthy of their friendship, make them realize there's no way you could ever take their money, make it seem so completely out of character they have no choice but to trust you. Most importantly, go out there and get your girl back. Also, try to find out who really took the money. That, that might help. Oh, really? Oh, and you don't say. If I crack the case, I'm off the hook? Oh, no, I didn't think about that one at all. But you're not a detective, and if you can't solve the mystery, don't worry. That's not, the, that's not what really matters. It's your responsibility to look after yourself and love yourself first. You sound like you've been reading self-help books again. Well, they really have good advice. Shut up. <laughs> Jinsu and Nene always knew how to cheer me up. I was happy to see that didn't change, even when we were so far apart. These two were true friends, and they would always be there for me. Yeah, why not try? Oh, either way, what, you weren't gonna try, dude? You're gonna hang out here the rest of the time not trying? I could either lay down and let this happen to me, or I could take a stand and try to control where it was going. Try to, cha try to change things up. This was my responsibility now. It was my life. I could blame people and circumstances all I wanted, but in the end, I could only control myself. This is my life. This is my semester abroad. I'll make sure it's the best it can be. That's my boy. Now go get some sleep. We'll talk to you again soon. We hung up and I crawled back into bed, snuggling into the blankets. I was up to... It was up to me to solve my money problems and reconcile with everybody. That was what I could do to change the situation. Better get some sleep, tomorrow's gonna be a big day. Alright. Well, you know what? My rant still applies. But you know what about Nene would work out? She actually gave me legitimate advice. Although it was advice I would have probably come to myself. I mean, obviously I was gonna hang out here and be like, Oh, it'll work out, no. But she at least told me how to manage the situation, which is fine. It's a lot better than, Oh, it'll be fine, you'll be okay. See, now that... I still believe that is bullshit. As soon as it was late enough in the day to be reasonably reasonable back home, I had to call my parents. I hated to do it, I hated to think how disappointed they would be. But Jin Su was right, pretending that there wasn't a problem wasn't a mature thing to do. I had enough money to cover up my rent for a few weeks, but not until the end of the time I was supposed to stay in England. I couldn't risk being thrown out into the street. Maybe I could find another job somewhere, but I couldn't count on that. I need to fall back plans. With a heavy heart, I began to dial. That evening, with the immediate disaster dealt with, as best as I could manage for now, I had time to think. I knew I hadn't stolen the money. Oh, <laughs> do you now? What if you have multiple personalities, Doc? You wouldn't know. Which logically meant that someone else had. Unless there was no money missing in the first place and James was just making it up for some reason. But why would he do that? As long as I was employed here, he could skim off me. If I left, he'd lose out. True, so maybe it's not James. It was possible he was just wrong, and there wasn't any money missing to begin with. James didn't look like a great bookkeeper. Still, if that were the case, how would I ever prove it? Oscar, my old boss at the Crafty Crown, was James' business partner. It was possible he might have borrowed money from the till for some reason. But if that were it, he should have explained the misunderstanding when James reported and fired me, right? During the time when, I, when the register drawer was broken and not closing right, anyone could have gotten into the register without even needing a key. The drawer was fixed before we went up to the trip, though, so if anyone went got into the hostel while it was closed, they would have had a harder time, and surely James would have noticed that on the cameras. If the drop-in guests from last week had stolen the money, we'd have a hard time finding them again. Could it be someone else in the hostel? I still don't know why Mark had so much money. Ah, we talked about that, remember, we talked about that. And had been so willing to give it away. He promised the money was clean, which actually sounded sort of suspicious. But if he were stealing from the hostel, why would he give me money? It doesn't make any sense. None of this could be happening if James hadn't sent me to fix the register drawer. And then it hit me. James didn't send me. Brendan told me that James wanted me to do it. Brendan certainly didn't seem super surprised by me being a thief. I needed to have a little talk with him. Oh baby, here we go. It's time to fucking lay into Brendan. Just... Fist flying in the air, punch him in his smug face and his goddamn happy trail. Yo, dog, I'm serious. Take care of that happy trail, okay? I finally managed to track him down while he was making a sandwich in the kitchen. When he saw me enter, he grinned. Well, if it isn't our neighborhood betrayer, you seem so friendly at first. I know you're the one who did it, Brendan. What, me? He finished his sandwich and took a bite, talking with his mouth full. Why on earth would I do that? I don't know. That's what I came to ask you. I don't expect you to let me off the hook. I know you hate me for some reason, but why? Brendan shoot thoughtfully. Do you want the real answer? I hesitated. Yes. He shrugged. I just do. I hate people like you. You've never had to work hard for anything, have you? You don't know what it's like to struggle? Your biggest problem in life is probably what you don't know. 
what you want to do with the rest of it. Do you know how lucky that is? Do you know how impossibly fortunate you are to have a problem like that? Everybody likes you immediately, you're on everyone's good side, and you immediately made things difficult for me. Well, you know what, Brendan? People might have liked me at first sight because I wasn't a douchebag like you generally are. May maybe that's the thing, don't try to act all like the victim here. Oh yeah, it's really hard for me because I, I struggle making friends because I'm a giant douche and, and people apparently don't like to hang out with gi giant douchebags. Oh, 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 poor me. Yeah, yeah, how about you work on your personality, dog? I'm just saying, right? Makes sense. Sure, I'm a terrible person. See, he even admits it. Because I ruined some guy's meal. I'm sure that's all you ever thought about. Brendan's a jerk, probably stupid too. Not worth my time. Is this guy really acting like the victim right now? Do you know what I, d what I would do for Oscar to keep my job after you ratted me out? You don't know anything about me. You don't know why I do what I do. You just assume I'm worthless, evil. <laughs> well, you know, call a spade a spade, right, Brendan? So I thought, okay, let's be evil. You want me to hate you? I'll give you a reason to believe it. I gave you exactly what you wanted. From where I'm standing, I did nothing wrong. Is this guy like a fucking maniac? He's, just, he's insane. This guy's crazy. You know what? I thought Danny was insane. Oh, this guy's even worse. This guy's like a supervillain. He's trying to justify what he does with bullshit reasons. And what are you going to do now? You want to hit me? Want to get mad? Go ahead. It's not going to change anything. I literally have a chance to fight this guy now. Try to understand? No, look, 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 man. I think that in terms of the story, if I want to, like, you know, keep in tune with the story, try to understand his little bullshit story would kind of, like, you know, make sense for it. Like, maybe it'll even give me a better outcome. But the thing is that I don't believe all the bullshit he just gave me. I think that he is making shit up. Like, you don't act that way, you know? Y you can't be like, oh, people don't like me because I'm a douchebag. Well, I mean, work on it. <laughs> Stop being a dick. I'm fighting you. I'm sorry to say. I reeled my arm back and I launched a punch, but he easily sidestepped it. Oh, come on, Falcon 69, at least land the goddamn punch. Something connected with the side of my face and I was sent sprawling to the floor. I looked up. Brendan stood over me, hate written across his features, the sandwich still in his hand. Ridiculous. This dude managed to punch me out, even though I took the first swing, while he was holding a sandwich. He stepped over me and out of the kitchen door without another word. I, ha I hastily got off the floor and rinsed my hands in the sink, trying to act as if nothing had happened. Oh yeah. Pathetic, absolutely pathetic. Good! I I'm glad you realized that it was. If Brendan was responsible for the theft, what could I possibly do about it? I was no detective, I couldn't break into a room to search for clues. What clues would there be anyway? There was only one possibility, and it was a pretty long shot. For now, I needed to get my act together and focus on my finances. This guy. How do you... How do you miss? How do you swing and miss with a guy? I mean, sure, Brendan probably thought I was gonna swing at him, obviously. But he's holding a sandwich, man. At least, like, juke him out. Like, go, go with the left? To get him to, like, you know, maybe move or something, and then you... Sucker punch with your right hand, you know, like, or whatever is your dominant hand, you know, give him a little, little, a little faker, you know? Fake him out, see where he's moving, and then when you see where he's moving, you come in with the other one and, oh, baby, right across the jaw. Am I saying this from fighting experience? No. I will have you guys know I have never fought in my life. <laughs> but I've watched a lot of movies. I have watched plenty of movies, and I've watched a lot of UFC. That doesn't mean anything you're saying. Yeah, you're probably right. I would probably get my shit kicked in in a fight. But, hey, you know, whatever. This is a, a visual novel game. As I was coming down the stairs, I heard uh, raised voices from the next room. Was always kind of rude, really. And this one time, we went skydiving and he practically pissed himself from fear. Couldn't stop having afterwards, but he swore up and down that he was fine. What a liar. Peggy, for real? <sighs> She's just running me down over here to somebody. My heart sank. Peggy was gossiping about me to the others, just like I was one of her terrible six-form friends. Like she didn't care about me at all anymore. I could barge in and tell her to stop, but what would be the point? Ugh. Oh, I feel like there's no coming back, guys. <laughs> I feel like there's just no coming back. I got laid out by Brandon. We have no way to prove that it was him. Peggy is apparently making him out to seem like the giant, like the, the, the most... <laughs> coward, cowardly dude of all time. Oh, I'm fine! You know what? It's okay if I was heaving afterwards. I went skydiving, okay? Humans don't belong skydiving. I tracked down James in a hostile lobby. What? Here. This is the money I owe you for this week's rent. And this is the money you're supposedly missing from the till, which I did not steal. Sure you didn't. 
No, you listen to me. I'm a paying customer now, you can't push me around. Oh, look at this guy, he suddenly grew a spine. I may have spent most of my life too quiet to stand up for myself, but this time, I had, had enough. I never stole from you, I never would steal from you or anyone else. I've already given you the money you wanted, so I've got no reason to pretend that I'm innocent. I am innocent. I was fixing the register drawer because Brendan told me you said it was broken and I had to fix it. And if you didn't know the drawer was broken, how come Brendan did? If you got the CCTV footage, look further back. Look what happened before I fixed the register. I don't take orders from you. Do you want the real thief to be under your roof and get away with it? I don't know what actually happened. I have no way to find out. But maybe you do. That's all I could do. I didn't know if I would do if it would do any good, but I had to try. That's all well and good. But why didn't we come up with this idea beforehand? You know, the moment we were accused, like, hey, James, I didn't do this. Can you maybe look before that little weird footage of mine and see if maybe somebody, you have like legitimate proof, like somebody literally grabbing the money. Because with our footage, he saw us from the back, right? And our body was covering the register, so there was no way to find out if we grabbed the money. I, I'm saying from the start, we'd have been like, hey, look a little bit further back, please, okay? Just to really make sure. But eh, yeah. Story progression, what can you do? Saturday was the last day of formal university classes for the spring semester. Today the reading period began, and the library filled with students visiting, or revising for their exams. I had a little bit of catching up to do, our beach trip meant I had missed a class, but then, the fallout from the theft had been a huge distraction. Still, I wasn't going at a little thing like that stopped me. Maybe these courses weren't serious or important for my degree back home, but there was no way I was going to fail. I went down to get a snack and ran into Ashley in the kitchen. Oh, Falcon 69. Hi. Hi. Um, Peggy's been saying things about you, like that you went to a couples contest and on her beach trip and you cursed out the announcer on stage in front of everyone. After she said that, she shot a look at me as if judging my reaction to see if it was true. I don't think it's a big deal to the guys. They generally tune her out when she starts talking like that, but I thought you might want to know. Okay then, I'll be going. Ashley was still polite to me generally, and the guys really didn't seem to care all that much about the scandal anymore. We were friendly on our own terms. But it was uncomfortable. I'd rather be outside than inside. God damn it, Peggy. Maybe I've made the wrong choice. Maybe I made the wrong choice, and all you guys that voted for Peggy made the wrong choice. Maybe we should have gone with Ashley. She seems more understanding. That's okay, though. We can't give up. We gotta mix Peggy C. Our side of the story here. It had been more than a week since I had spoken to Peggy. She spent most of her time now at university, focusing on her studies. Apparently there was some volleyball game she played in as well, but I didn't go. I wasn't about to infringe on her desire for space. For all I knew, she never wanted to speak to me again. But she spoke to the others about me. Oh, did she ever speak to the others. It seemed every other day I heard from another person in the hostel. Peggy was talking about you again. For the most part, I didn't want to hear what they had to say, mostly because it wasn't good. Instead, I spent my time in the hostel's front lawn. It was getting too... It was getting... It was getting to warmer weather, at least. Understanding the English climate was still a little difficult, but it was nice to be outside. It was a kind of a hobby I picked up, partially because I was interesting and I needed something to do, and partially because it reminded me of... Hey. I looked up from my spot in the corner of the lawn. Peggy stood at the entrance of the street, hands in her pockets. Oh, hey. She walked over to me. I stood and dusted my hands. How are you? I'm doing well. Better than before. I had some time to think, you know. I nodded. But what's all this? This, um, a secret. Actually, you should be able to tell what it is. You gave me the idea for it. She squinted closely at the plants in front of me, then scanned the rest of the yard. Are you... Composting? Yeah, you got it. Or I'm fertilizing these plants with some of what I've managed to compost. I think at least. I'm still kind of winging it, so I'm not sure if I rushed it or... Why are you composting? I looked at her, caught by the urgency in her voice. I didn't have anything else to do. Is that it? Is that your only reason? It seemed like fun. You inspired me. Well, um... We are trying to get back into our good graces, right? 
Well, I'd been thinking about the things you said, and I wanted to try making a difference. Even if it was only a tiny one. Falcon 69, you... You! She started to turn red, and I resisted the impulse to touch her. Don't, don't cry, please, don't cry. I'm not going to cry, I'm mad. Why are you mad? Why can't you stop being a good person? I hate you, why are you making it so hard for me? I don't understand. I believe you. I believe you didn't do it. It doesn't make any sort of sense, but I believe you, okay? Okay. She smacked my shoulder and I stared at her in bewilderment. I hate you. Do you? Yes, I hate you, I... I feel terrible. Now she was crying. I threw off my composting gloves and I pulled her into a hug, where she started sobbing into my shoulder. I'm so sorry, I wanted to hate you, I really did. I was so scared, I, I thought I knew who you were, and the thought that you would have done something like that made me freak out. I couldn't believe in you. It was too... you were too dangerous. I cared about you too much. Shh. It's okay, Peggy. But I told everyone so many awful things about you. Yeah, I, I heard. I, I overheard you and I heard from Ashley and other people as well. You were just ringing me through the fucking drawers there. Did you? Yes. I sighed. Well, it's all water under the bridge. If you can, if you can believe in me now, I'll believe in you. That you didn't mean what you said. That you care about me. I do. I do. I love you, Falcon69. Peggy. I love you too. Peggy looked up at me, tears streaming down her face. You do? Of course I do. Look at me, composting in a garden. You think I would do this if I didn't care about you? She giggled, and I wiped the tears off her face. No, maybe not. I scoffed. Maybe not? Listen to you, you're just so... Peggy. I can't help that. She leaned up and kissed me. Then she pulled away, her face was red. Hand in hand, we headed back into the hostel to catch up. Oh, baby! Hey, maybe, um, maybe things are gonna be fine altogether. Oh, look, good guy, we're just skimming forward here. We're just skimming forward here. All right, guys, gonna wrap it up here. Everything seems to be fine now. And chances are, I believe we're at the end, or heading towards the end now. So next episode should be the last episode. I will catch you next time.